Hi everyone, my name is Jason and today I want to show you how to use PromptFoo to test your own text decipher model. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a Hugging Face dataset, which is actually going to be a Parquet file, and we're going to convert it into a CSV file. CSVs can be used by PromptFoo to run assertion tests, and we're going to do this all locally using Olama models. What I have here is the Hugging Face entry for the Neo4j text decipher model. And if you go to the lower right here, you can see there is an entry for the data set used to train this model. So we're gonna open this up. And if you go to the right again, in this vertical kebab menu, click on this and you'll see clone repository. So we're gonna copy this git clone command. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a folder for this project. And I'm just gonna call it PromptFoo text decipher. And then I will go into this folder and I'll clone the data there. Once it is done, I will open it up in Visual Studio Code. And in here, I can see that I have two Parquet files. Uh, reveal and Finder. So there is this website called TabLab, which can convert Parquet files to CSVs. So I'm just going to grab one of these Parquet files, drop it in here. Okay, so it will, I will download it into my system. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it into my folder that I created, prompt foo text decipher. Here we are, I'm gonna put it over here. What I'm going to do is open this up with uh, Apple's numbers. So it's equivalent to Google, Google Sheets or Excel. And we can see here, we've got a number of columns here and some data. So the interesting bit is, is I've got a basically a prompt question here, the graph schema, and the cipher that should be outputted from that combination. So for PromptFoo, what we can do is we can add in a extra column here, and any column that is underscore underscore expected. So by default, the expected column will try to do a, a string equals match, right? So if I put in here, you know, should equals hello world, it will evaluate and try to make sure that the output is equal to hello world. Here, I kind of probably want the, the cipher statement that was tested and vetted. So here I can actually just put in a variable cipher, which is the name of this column header, right? So it will just take the value in each of those rows when it tests uh, this data later. Now, also, <laughs> there are a lot of records in this data set. So I'm just gonna grab the first three for us to uh, experiment with here, rather than all 4,000. So what I'm going to do is grab all these other records and I'm just going to delete them so that we only have three records or two records to work with and export this as a smaller CSV. So I'll just call this short. Okay, so now if I go back to Visual Studio Code and I'm gonna open up a terminal, now I'm ready to start PromptFoo. And if PromptFoo is already installed on your system, you can just type in PromptFoo init. And it will ask you a few questions uh, like, what do you plan on doing? and which type of models are you planning to run? And I'm gonna use Olama. Okay, so it, when the init is run, it will create a PromptFoo config.yaml file into your folder. And here, this is all sort of boilerplate um, uh, examples. And so the config is basically made up of three parts, right? One is the prompts that you're gonna run. Um, the models that you want to use to run these prompts, and then the test assertions. Now, you can manually add in test assertions here in the YAML file, but today we're not going to do that. Today we're going to just use the CSV as the source of the, the tests. And to do that, just put in file colon forward slash forward slash is it backslash backslash. I always forget. And then the name of the file, right? So here I'm just going to copy this and paste it here and 
Here I want to change the prompt, right? Because I don't want to test uh, about creating tweets. And let's do, given a graph schema, and here we'll put in, so what you use is the uh, double braces for signifying dynamic variables. Uh, and here I'm putting in the column header schema, given a graph schema, write a query, a uh, cipher query that answers the question. And then I'll put in the question column header. Okay. And here I'm going to use Olama, right? Uh, locally. And the model I'm going to use is text to cipher. No, I should show you my models here. List. So I could actually run this. So prompt foo eval is the command to run the test, any eval test. Uh, oh, okay. I always forget. I gotta close this prompt up at the top. Run this again. Give this a minute. Okay, so the test is complete and it had one success, one failure. <laughs> This will likely happen often if you're doing a text to cipher test because there are pro several different ways you could write the same cipher statement and get the similar results. So what we can do is go back to our evaluation and instead of looking for an exact string match to that vetted cipher statement is we can use uh, the LLM rubric option which is a prompt foo option to use a model to evaluate a given output answer. So here I want to ask, um, is the output equivalent, oops, equivalent to this cipher? Okay, pretty broad here. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this to both records. Ah, so yes, in a CSV, you can specify different assertions for each row if you wanted to. Uh, but since I want to run the same assertion, I'm just going to copy paste to each row. Okay, so I'm going to update that CSV file. Short, I'm going to overwrite. And then I'm going to run this again, uh, but it's going to fail. Okay, so what we see here is we have an API call error. And that happens because the LLM rubric command by default uses OpenAI to run the model evaluation, right? So by default, it doesn't use the provider option here. So this can be overridden through the test configuration and also when you run the command, right? So when you run the eval, let me show you here, you can add in a dash dash greater option and specify the model you want to use for doing the evaluation. So here I've got llama three, so I'll just use that. All right, two successes, one failure. So we can see here that the LLM rubric command uh, was successful. Now, um, oh, kind of expecting this particular model to pass, so here, what I can do now is I can test another model to see what the output would be. So we're gonna see how well Mistral is at creating uh, cipher statements. Okay, so one success, one failure. And here, the query has a similar structure, but is not identical. Oh, interesting. Uh, and you, we can actually see this here, right? So looks like there is some preamble that Mistral is adding, right? So it's not giving a, a cipher only output, which, you know, is kind of as expected. Okay, last thing I'll mention about the CSV is you can put in several different assertions, right? So if I wanted a second assertion, I would just put in another column and put expected and then suffix it with a number. Then what prompt foo will do is it will make sure that each of these assertions are passed before uh, considering it, it, you know, passed, right? So I could, if I wanted to make sure that I'm getting true 
cipher outputs, I could put in another LLM rubric command to specifically look for that, but I actually haven't found a good prompt that gave me good accurate answers. So I can kind of cheat by using the start with uh, option. So this is just looking for like the first string, string output and seeing if it equals this given value. And so I know most cipher statements are gonna begin with match. So I'm just gonna use this as a poor man's way of checking for uh, in a correct cipher only output. Okay, so this is updated. I'm going to export this to uh, CSV again. I'm gonna overwrite this and then run our test again. Okay, two failures uh, from Mistral. Ah, so here, if I wanted to test against the text to cipher model, I can add that in. So it's gonna run against Mistral and text to cipher. And if the terminal output isn't big enough, you can also output using the dash O, you can output an HTML file that will um, give you more uh, space to work with. So we can see the output here. Mistral is this column, and then the last column here is using the text to cipher model. And here, surprisingly, both failed, it looks like. Um, okay, so here I would wanna dive in a little bit deeper as to why this had failed. But as you can see, this is a good example of how you can take a CSV of existing data, modify it, and then pass it to PromptFoo to run test evaluations on. All right, hope you enjoyed and it was useful. Happy coding and see you in the next one.